In ring theory, a branch of abstract algebra, a quotient ring, also known as factor ring, difference ring or residue class ring, is a construction quite similar to the factor groups of group theory and the quotient spaces of linear algebra. One starts with a ring R and a two-sided ideal I in R, and constructs a new ring, the quotient ring R, I, whose elements are the cosets of I in R subject to special plus and operations. Quotient rings are distinct from the so-called quotient field, or field of fractions, of an integral domain as well as from the more general rings of quotients obtained by localization. Formal quotient ring construction Given a ring R and a two-sided ideal I in R, we may define an equivalence relation tilde on R as follows. A tilde B if and only if a minus B is in I. Using the ideal properties, it is not difficult to check that tilde is a congruence relation. In case a tilde B, we say that A and B are congruent modulo I. The equivalence class of the element A in R is given by A equals A plus I equals A plus R. R in I. This equivalence class is also sometimes written as a mod I and called the residue class of a modulo I. The set of all such equivalence classes is denoted by R I. It becomes a ring, the factor ring or quotient ring of R modulo I. If one defines plus equals plus I equals plus I, the zero element of R I is equals I, and the multiplicative identity is the map P from R to R I defined by P equals a plus I is a surjective ring homomorphism, sometimes called the natural quotient map or the canonical homomorphism. Examples The quotient R 0 is naturally isomorphic to R and R R is the zero ring 0 since, by our definition, for any R in R. We have that R equals R plus 0 equals R plus B b in 0, which is isomorphic to R itself. This fits with the general rule of thumb that the larger the ideal I, the smaller the quotient ring R, I. If I is a proper ideal of R, i.e., I R, then R, I is not the zero ring. Consider the ring of integers Z and the ideal of even numbers, denoted by 2Z. Then the quotient ring Z, 2Z has only two elements, 0 for the even numbers and 1 for the odd numbers. Applying the definition again, Z equals Z plus 2Z equals Z plus 2Z, 2Z in 2Z, where 2Z is the ideal of even numbers. It is naturally isomorphic to the finite field with two elements, F2. Intuitively, if you think of all the even numbers as zero, then every integer is either zero or one. Modular arithmetic is essentially arithmetic in the quotient ring Z, and Z. Now consider the ring R, X, of polynomials in the variable X with real coefficients and the ideal i equals consisting of all multiples of the polynomial x2 plus 1. The quotient ring R x is naturally isomorphic to the field of complex numbers C, with the class x playing the role of the imaginary unit i. The reason we force x2 plus 1 equals 0, i.e., x2 equals minus 1, which is the defining property of i. Generalizing the previous example, quotient rings are often used to construct field extensions. Suppose k is some field and f is an irreducible polynomial in k, x. Then L equals K, X, is a field whose minimal polynomial over K is F, which contains K as well as an element X equals X plus. One important instance of the previous example is the construction of the finite fields. Consider for instance the field F3 equals Z, 3Z with three elements. The polynomial f equals x2 plus 1 is irreducible over f3, and we can construct the quotient ring f3, x. This is a field with 32 equals 9 elements, denoted by f9. The other finite fields can be constructed in a similar fashion. The coordinate rings of algebraic varieties are important examples of quotient rings in algebraic geometry. As a simple case, consider the real variety V equals x2 equals y3 as a subset of the real plane R2. 
The ring of real-valued polynomial functions defined on V can be identified with the quotient ring R, X, Y, and this is the coordinate ring of E. The variety V is now investigated by studying its coordinate ring. Suppose M is a C infinity manifold, and P is a point of M. Consider the ring R equals C infinity of all C infinity functions defined on M, and let I be the ideal in R consisting of those functions F which are identically zero in some neighborhood U of P. Then the quotient ring R, I is the ring of germs of C infinity functions on M at P. Consider the ring F of finite elements of a hyperreal field asterisk R. It consists of all hyperreal numbers differing from a standard real by an infinitesimal amount, or equivalently, of all hyperreal numbers x for which a standard integer n with minus n less than x less than n exists. The set tie of all infinitesimal numbers in asterisk R, together with zero, is an ideal in F, and the quotient ring F, I is isomorphic to the real numbers R. The isomorphism is induced by associating to every element x of f the standard part of x, i.e., the unique real number that differs from x by an infinitesimal. In fact, one obtains the same result, namely r, if one starts with the ring f of finite hyperrationals, see construction of the real numbers. Alternative complex planes the quotients R, X, R, X, and R, X, are all isomorphic to R and gain little interest at first. But note that R, X, is called the dual number plane in geometric algebra. It consists only of linear binomials as remainders after reducing an element of R, X by X2. This alternative complex plane arises as a subalgebra whenever the algebra contains a real line and a nil potent. Furthermore, the ring quotient R X does split into R X and R X, so this ring is often viewed as the direct sum R R. Nevertheless, an alternative complex number Z equals X plus Y J is suggested by J as a root of X 2 minus 1, compared to I as root of X 2 plus 1 equals 0. This plane of split complex numbers normalizes the direct sum by providing a basis 1. J for two space where the identity of the algebra is at unit distance from the zero. With this basis a unit hyperbola may be compared to the unit circle of the ordinary complex plane. Quaternions and alternatives suppose X and Y are two non-commuting indeterminates and form the free algebra then Hamilton's quaternions of 1843 can be cast as if y2 minus 1 is substituted for y2 plus 1. Then one obtains the ring of split quaternions, substituting minus for plus in both the quadratic binomials also results in split quaternions. The anti-commutative property yx equals minus xy implies that xy has for its square equals xy equals minus xy equals minus xxy y equals minus 1. The three types of biquaternions can also be written as quotients by use of the free algebra with three indeterminates rx, y, z in constructing appropriate ideals, properties. Clearly, if R is a commutative ring, then so is R, I. The converse, however, is not true in general. The natural quotient map P has I as its kernel, since the kernel of every ring homomorphism is a two-sided ideal. We can state that two-sided ideals are precisely the kernels of ring homomorphisms. The intimate relationship between ring homomorphisms, kernels and quotient rings can be summarized as follows. The ring homomorphisms defined on R are essentially the same as the ring homomorphisms defined on R that vanish on I. More precisely, given a two-sided ideal I in R and a ring homomorphism F, Rs whose kernel contains I, then there exists precisely one ring homomorphism G, R, I, S with G, P equals F. The map G here is given by the well-defined rule G equals F for all R in R. Indeed, this universal property can be used to define quotient rings and the natural quotient maps. As a consequence of the above, one obtains the fundamental statement. Every ring homomorphism F, 
RS induces a ring isomorphism between the quotient ring R, Ker and the image M. The ideals of R and R are closely related. The natural quotient map provides a bijection between the two-sided ideals of R that contain I and the two-sided ideals of R, I. This relationship between two-sided ideal extends to a relationship between the corresponding quotient rings. If M is a two-sided ideal in R that contains I, and we write M, I for the corresponding R ideal in R, I, the quotient rings R, M and, are naturally isomorphic via the mapping of plus M plus M, I. In commutative algebra and algebraic geometry, the following statement is often used. If R, 0, is a commutative ring and I is a maximal ideal, then the quotient ring R, I is a field, if I is only a prime ideal, then R, I is only an integral domain. A number of similar statements relate properties of the ideal I to properties of the quotient ring R, I. The Chinese remainder theorem states that, if the ideal I is the intersection of pairwise coprime ideals I1, ik, then the quotient ring R, I is isomorphic to the product of the quotient rings R, I, P, P equals 1, K.